Studies show that one in four young women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime. Hold on to that fact. It was so important that the Delaware State University Police has asked us here at WDSU-TV to cover this very important topic and issue. Here to discover the truth and get deeper into it is Sergeant Joy Simmons. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> it's very interesting to see you outside of your uniform. Oh, thank you. And you look beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. So off camera, we were talking about the statistic, one in four women will be sexually assaulted. What does that mean to you? As, the, as we discussed earlier, mm -hmm. um, I explained that from a personal perspective, I have four uh, teenage girls mm -hmm. um, who on any given day could be in my household. And um, there are uh, four females that are very dear to me. Two of them are, are nieces, three of them are nieces, and one of them is my daughter. And so um, I often, you know, consider which one of them am I willing to compromise or to, to, to accept a statistic, right. to accept as a statistic. And so that provides me a greater drive and ambition to educate them, and not only educate them, educate others who, um, who, who come in my path and are willing to listen on how to prevent themselves from being that one in four. Absolutely. So outside of the uniform, you're an advocate for sexual assault awareness. And I definitely want you to expand on that definition of what sexual assault is and um, how it can be avoided. Of course. Sexual assault is, um, the, the definition for sexual assault itself has a wide variety of um, adjectives associated with it. Um, but to simplify what sexual assault is, um, I would say that Sexual assault is definitely unwanted. Yeah. Um, it is forced. Um, it is an egregious act against a person mm -hmm. um, of sexual misconduct or sexual contact. It is not limited to rape. Um, it also includes unlawful sexual contact, which would be touching of a person's body or touching of them, period, with your hands, with your mouth, with any part of your body that is unwanted. And um, oftentimes people get stuck on um, the ideas that a sexual assault is um, something that is um, forceful and um, it's obviously forceful and, and, and they look to see rage, mm. they look to see um, the, common, the common perception of a rapist as being the guy in an alley with a, a knit hat on. Um, but truthfully, most rapes are um, most rapes that take place take place between people who know each other, right. and so um, rapes is often coerced um, coercion, um, meaning that um, it's something that the victim may not have wanted to happen, but the suspect knows enough about the victim or observed some vulnerabilities um, in the victim that they use to that they use to their advantage right. um, to 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 take control of the situation, which is another element of sexual assault. Sexual assault is also defined as one having a desire for power and control over the victim. Absolutely. And with power and control, they go into these games called coercion games. Yes, ma'am. Please educate our viewers on what is exactly coercion games. Coercion games. And, you know, I like that, that terminology. Yeah. Coercion games. Um, a long time ago, even when I was a teenager, even now, um, coercion is something that used to be classified as just running game right. on another party, on, on a female. Males would often not accept no as an answer because they knew that they had what it took to get a yes out of the female, whether the, the yes really meant yes or not, as long as they felt like they could get her to, um, to give in to what his desire was. They, 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 they worked on it. So an example of a coercion game would be when um, an individual person um, um, does their best to try and convince uh, another party that they want something beyond the scope of what they're willing to give, like uh, offering to purchase something for that other person or saying, oh, you don't want to have sex? Can I touch you? Can I kiss you? just minimizing and decreasing the amount of physical interaction that they have with that person in hopes of going from first base to third base. Absolutely. Um, speaking of when they ask, can I touch you? Can I, you know, do this to you or that to you? Body image, you know, flashes in my head. Does that play a part in sexual assault? Of course. Body image plays a big part. Um, I often call it a backpack of rocks. It seems like um, oftentimes um, predators 
um, or individuals who, who will sexually assault another, they have this innate ability to identify when an individual um, has a low self-esteem or that when they're carrying burdens or um, if they're working on trying to um, feel accepted in the environment in which they're in. Um, and then they use those things to their advantage. They use those things to their advantage so that um, the, the person who is at that vulnerable state, whether it's mentally or physically, emotionally, whatever the challenges that that individual has, they have this ability to identify it and they use that to that, their advantage to get them to succumb to the um, desires of taking advantage of them that they have. Absolutely. This is a very heavy topic, and I know that we can't stop there. So when we get back, we're going to get into body image some more. We're going to get into Amber Rose and her feminist walk, and we're going to get into mental health and the effects it has from sexual assault. All this when we tune back in.